So in this first example, um, we have a missile being launched at 100 Gs for three seconds, then undergoing a negative 4 G deceleration. Question here is how long does it take to reach altitude 15 kilometers? So this is the first example of um, really constant acceleration, right? Two phases of constant acceleration, constant acceleration kinematics, right? Where uh, maybe acceleration is imposed as a, a function of time, where that function of time is a trivial version of, um, of being constant. So let's see, let's give this a coordinate. Start S right there, All right? That's our constant rectilinear motion coordinate, S. And um, let's break this down. Actually, let's use this space over here. Phase one first. Okay, phase one, that is a constant acceleration uh, where the A naught is 100 times gravitational acceleration, G, um, for the first three seconds. So from zero to three seconds. So let's see here. Um, important quantities, we're going to always need to know the initial values whenever we have them. Our initial time is zero, our initial Location, right, S, we're going to start at the ground, is zero, and our initial velocity is zero starting at rest. Okay, so this first phase, right, um, our position with time is just going to be one-half A naught T squared as we cancel out uh, those other two terms. Um, and we'll see the full, well, yeah, uh, there, would, there would be these other terms here as well, right, S naught plus uh, V naught t minus t naught, and in fact, this would be t minus t naught. Might as well just put the whole thing in there, right? Oh, got to use t minus t naught squared. Let's be thorough, right? First example here. Okay. Uh, so, and then, well, this is zero, right? This is zero, so that whole term is zero, and that one is zero too, right? So that's how we got to what I had originally up there, which is that S of t is just one half a naught t squared. We then want to know how long does it take to reach altitude 15 kilometers. To know that, we need to know where does this, uh, how high do we go in just this first phase, right? So how high do we achieve in this constant acceleration of 100 g in the first three seconds, okay? So this is going to be uh, one half a hundred is our uh, factor of gravity acceleration upward, which is 9.81 meters per second squared times three seconds squared, which we get four point, uh, not four, four thousand, four hundred and fourteen and a half um, kilometers, or meters. So it's like uh, a, little bit, a little bit under four and a half kilometers, okay? Let me try to sneak all this in here. 414.5, and that unit is meters. Okay, now the reason we determine this is when we go into phase two, so we haven't reached 15 kilometers yet, right? So this number is going to be the S naught when we move into the second phase for phase two. Okay. Uh, we also, right, um, we, well, we know what the phase two's initial time is going to be, right? So these are the initial values, time, position, and velocity for phase one. We now have the value for the initial phase, uh, the initial position for phase two, right, which is going to be S now, right, as we uh, 4.4 kilometers, and the initial time is going to be three seconds. So the only thing remaining is what is our initial velocity for phase two? We know that we need to know the final velocity for phase one, right? And that's going to be using that relationship. And so the velocity at three seconds is uh, 981, that's 100 times gravity, meter per second squared, upward acceleration for the three seconds, which is 2,943 meter per second. This is our V naught for phase two. And that's it. So now we can move into phase two, 
which I've reserved this space over here. Phase two is going to be um, also constant acceleration with, but it's deceleration, right? So negative 4g deceleration. And this is going to be for as long as we need. At least that's what we are, you know, uh, modeling the, the system as, right? Now our initial values here, we've already talked through all of them, right? We're going to reuse the same, you know, this is only for phase one. So we kind of break up our analysis. That's all now done, right? Now we're going to move into phase two. We need new initial values. We're starting phase two at three seconds at a height or an altitude of 4,414.5 meters. And our initial velocity here is a little bit less than 3,000 meter per second. Three kilometers per second, moving quite fast here, right? Okay, so now our position, which is actually all we need to do here, because now we should be able to answer this question. We don't need to work through velocity. Our position is given by this formula, the general position, oops, the general position formula um, for the constant acceleration case as a function of time. Okay. And uh, so now what we're going to do, we're going to actually solve for the time to reach 15 kilometers, right? 15,000 meters equals 4,414.5 meters plus 2,943 meter per second. This is now times t minus t naught plus one half uh, negative 4 times 9.81 meter per second squared. All of this times t minus t naught squared. Now we have a quadratic relationship, right? So we can solve uh, the quadratic. I guess we need to subtract 15,000 from this side, so this would be a negative number, but then it would set up a nice quadratic equation for the unknown t minus t naught. If you solve that, right, um, which I'm just going to hand wave over, you get 3.687 seconds, okay? And, uh, you, and then also there's another solution to this. You also get 1,446, and then 0.313 seconds. We'll talk about this here in a second, right? But I, for right now, this is the solution we're, we're going to go with. So um, to go from here to here, right, is solving a quadratic equation for the variable t minus t naught, right? So we're not going to be able to, you know, run through that, but just, right, set it up. Uh, I already talked about how we subtract this over. Your a value, you know, you get ax squared plus bx plus c equaling zero. That's what we'd set up. Here is a, here is b, and then it'd be this number minus that would be a, a negative value for c here. Uh, and then you can either graph that out, you can just go to the quadratic formula, some way to, to solve that for two roots. You always get two different solutions. This is now just uh, the change, how, how long we are in phase two before we reach 15 kilometers. The total time is going to be t here, which is going to be, well, we add three seconds, seconds on because we spent three seconds in phase one. So 6.687 seconds. And that is the final answer. But why did we not go with this route? Because that's, that's completely fine. Remember, the quadratic, we would, we would have basically have t minus t naught equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where, um, well, we can, this value here is b, this value here is a, and then uh, C, all right, we got to be a little bit creative here. C is going to equal 4414.5 minus 15,000. All right, and plug those in. But you got plus minus here, right? So you're going to have two different solutions. Um, <coughs> and um, noting here that, uh, right, so A is going to be negative, right? So B is positive here, but this like first term is going to be a pretty big number, 
Oh, well, not big number. It's just going to be a positive number that we're either adding or subtracting something onto. And it ends up you get two, two, two solutions here. Well, think about what we've done, right? We start the rocket down here at the ground. It accelerates upward very quickly. And then after phase one is over, right, we start decelerating, right? So maybe here's the end of, of, uh, of phase one, all right? And at this time, our velocity is still heading up, but we start decelerating, right? So the velocity, you know, slows down, right? But that doesn't mean we have a, you know, we have a ton of velocity here, right? It's, it's moving quite fast, a high speed. And so maybe this is the uh, 15 kilometer mark. Well, let's see, how far did we get? We got to 4,000 kilometers. We can draw this to scale. Not perfectly to scale, but uh, more, more approximate to scale. So let's say we just draw a graph here of our height, uh, which is s versus time. And uh, so definitely not going to be perfect here. And let's say this is about 4 meters, and this is 15 meters. Okay. What's going to happen here, the rocket's going to start off accelerating very quickly until we reach about 4.4. All right, then it's going to start decelerating. In fact, this would be accelerating, so this would be a rapid increase in speed. Big parabola going up. You can see what the, that should be a quadratic, right? With a, with a steep slope, because A naught is steep. Well, a steep, uh, you know, quadratic um, uh, curvature, basically, is A naught. When we're here, it's going to start turning over, right? Because now we're going to be decelerating at minus 4G, right? But it doesn't mean it turns over that fast, and in fact, this could go way up here before we reach down again, right? Before the rocket slows down. So it starts slowing down, but it doesn't mean it's still going up, right? And so we reach that 15 kilometer at 3.687 seconds, but we also reach it again if this 4G deceleration we're going to keep going on way out here at uh, 146.313 seconds as well. Okay. So that's why you got two solutions. Um, we're really interested in just the first one when we first reach 15 kilometers. Okay, that's it for this example. All right, so in this uh, second example, um, I got two more examples here of uh, working through the, the theory of particle kinematics, so applying that theory. Um, so again, relating uh, here, see, here we're specifying acceleration as a function of position, noticing that type of a problem, and then working through to get at um, a displacement and a velocity um, associated with that, right? So applying those ideas from last time, we're relating, you know, motion um, along along straight line paths, so rectilinear motion. Um, so this the the system we have here is a mass connected to a spring. Um, define uh, our coordinate system, or basically that the zero point is this initial state where the spring isn't doing anything, right? It's in its equilibrium position. It's not deformed. It's not stretched or compressed at all. So it's not providing a force at all. And actually this is, you know, we're, we're in U.S. customary units here. So our acceleration is specified here. So what's, what's going to happen here, right, is um, due to gravity, this thing is going to fall right later on it's going to come down here but as it's falling down right the spring is pulling back up on it now we're in kinematics we're not worrying about the forces involved here but we should keep an eye on them because they're they're right around the corner when we do analyze them and so really what is, what's happening is here is the force due to gravity is pulling down causing an acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared that's constant acceleration due to gravity near the earth's surface but the spring, as we get, as S gets pulled more and more down, there's a restoring force to pull it back upward. And so uh, that'll then pull it back up um, with a strength of 50S here. And so what we're saying here is the spring constant is 50. Okay, so we don't need to write it down. We're not doing that right. This is um, uh, kinematics only, describing motion. How does motion relate to, you know, motion quantity, like acceleration? How does that tell us about the position, the geometry um, through time, the velocity, right? And that's a key aspect of, of dynamics here. Okay, so let's get into analyzing this. Um, maybe we st let's start by just recognize. Let's, let's visualize just what the motion is. So if if s is defined, our position variable is defined downward like that. Then at time zero, we start at 
0 at s equals 0. So, all right, and then later on in time, we will uh, reach some maximum downward displacement, right? S max. And uh, turns out that this is going to be sinusoidal motion. Something like that, okay? And now remember, as we go up on the plot, we're actually going down. Um, associated with that, then, is I'm going to be more careful than I was uh, in the last video to make this line up perfectly here. Because now velocity is just the derivative of that. And uh, you know what? To make this completely accurate, we need to go down just as far. Okay, so this point here, uh, let's see, this point right here, we have zero velocity, right? That's the tangent line has a zero slope. Tangent line has zero slope, tangent line has zero slope. So all of these points should have zero velocity. Okay, and then here, at this point, we have maximum velocity. Slope is the most. Here is slope is the most but negative. Slope is the most but positive. Slope is the most but negative. So, should look something like this. So, and also, we just release it from rest. So, V naught also equals zero, right? Okay. So that's a nice visual, not gonna help us at all. Really, <laughs> the main reason for doing this is we, we're gonna need those values and those are specified uh, as the, the mass is released from rest here. Okay, so we recognize that acceleration specified as a function of position. So that brings us into um, that realm of, of uh, systems here. Let's see, did I? I think I showed this, right? Mass m is released from rest, okay, <clears throat> which is what specifies that v naught equals zero. Okay, and then the acceleration is specified right here, right? 32.2, yeah, I remember. We talked about um, where those came from. Okay, so our acceleration is specified as a function of position. Definition of acceleration is dv dt, change in velocity with time. Now we worked through this in the general way previously. We got a general result, but let's let's start back from the basics, right? Remind us where these relationships come from, right? Acceleration is defined to be dv dt. We express this through the chain rule so that we can have a pure relationship not involving time but position because that is what is specified where acceleration is a function of position, right? We can't have it as a function of time, or at least we can't use it, okay? We then take this relationship. Here's our initial velocity and integrate it, right? We're integrating this right-hand side uh, through two positions and uh, we get a dv that turns out to a, a integration in velocity as we integrate from zero position to some s position of the acceleration, 32.2 minus 50s ds. Okay, so I've switched the order here, right? I'm taking a of s and integrating it through two position points, and then uh, then on the left hand side did the same thing with the with the right hand side of this expression. <coughs> okay, this left hand side is n v squared over two. The right hand side is thirty two point two s minus fifty s squared over two. Okay, and uh, so. V of s is just going to be 64.4 um, as we multiply through by 2, s minus 50 s squared, and square root the whole thing. Okay, so that's, that's actually really important, right? So now if, if you give me any position s, I can tell you what the velocity is. But that's not what the question was, right? The question was, What's the maximum downward displacement and the maximum velocity? So actually, we're going to solve the second one first here. So now we need to say, well, what? where do we get maximum velocity? Maximum velocity is going to happen at, um, well, another reason for drawing the picture, right? Max velocity is going to occur 
here, uh, let me sneak it in there, V max, that's what we're looking to solve for. Maximum velocity is going to be uh, <coughs> going to occur at, at this point here. Okay, so um, now actually said we're going to actually solve for the second one first. It looks like we are. I mean, we actually could we could do it. Um, <coughs> let's let's see. Let's let's do that. Um, well, let's do them in the order. Let's do them in the order they were asked, right? So uh, my notes, I have them switched here, but we'll we'll do this first because you can actually do them in any order from from here on out, right? So let's actually focus on uh, the maximum position, right? We needed to do this because the maximum position is actually right. The maximum position here is uh, given by, or the important way to do that, the the convenient way to do that is where velocity is zero. Right, and you can see like in the actual system, right, as this thing's bing, 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 right, our maximum downward displacement is going to be just the point where our negative velocity is turning over to a positive velocity, highlighted by the velocity equals zero point, right? So let's do that first. Let's do max s first. Is going to occur when velocity, or ds dt, equals zero. Okay, so we can take this result. And set that equal to zero. Well, that's just going to be where 64s, 64.4s equals 50s squared. All right. So one solution to this is um, is s equals zero. Right. Um, but that's the uh, not the one we're looking for. So we'll cancel one of the s's, and we just get that s max is going to be uh, 64.4. And now this is, this has units feet per second squared over 50 feet per second. How do I know that? All right, go back to the, the, these really came from these two terms, right? Well, if the whole thing is feet per second squared, the units on this first one, because it's by itself, is feet per second squared. And this thing, whatever 50 is, when it does have units associated with it, you multiply it by a, a length dimension. So, um, um, yeah, so this is going to be squared. I had this wrong. This is just 1 over second squared. Yeah, I was going to say that didn't feel right. Again, my notes were not correct. That's 1 over s squared, so this isn't correct. We need to update this. The units down here is 1 over s squared. That didn't make any sense. Okay, great. So now um, s max is just 1.8. 288 feet. Great. And then we just need to find um, our maximum velocity, maximum V. That occurs when dV dt is zero. All right, well, that's just acceleration is zero. All right, just like up here. All right, we're, we're maximizing, we go to the derivative. When the derivative of s is zero, well, that's defined to be velocity is zero. Now here, uh, when our velocity's time derivative is zero, we'll get a maximum. And uh, well, luckily, dv dt is the acceleration. We already have that. And that one we could have done right away, right? This is specified. Um, although we needed, uh, yeah, so let's see. So we're just gonna solve 32.2 equals 50s. And so this is a little bit, um, this is like a, um, an intermediate point, right? So let's, let's say, um, let's give this a different symbol, right? S. It's an important S, so we'll say S star with an asterisk on there, right? That's going to be the point where we have maximum velocity. So let's say at S equals S star is where V max occurs. And then we solve it by just setting A equal to zero at the end and find the S point, right? So this is not the same as this, right? In fact, they're exact opposites one another. Take a look back at our diagram, right? When is velocity max? is right between S max and zero. So it's kind of offset, exactly halfway offset, in fact. 
<clears throat> we don't need to know that going in. You don't need to be able to know that it's a, um, a sinusoid, right? This all comes from the math by optimizing or maximizing. Um, you know, to find maximum mass, we maximize by taking the derivative and setting it to zero. Same with velocity. We maximize by taking the derivative and setting it to zero. Well, that just is acceleration, which is specified. Solve for it. Now we found the S location where we get maximum velocity, or at least we can do it. Simple division here. 0.644 feet. No coincidence that that's exactly half of that. But this isn't the final answer, right? We want to get the maximum velocity. The maximum velocity is then what we, this is why we had to solve for this, right? As I said, we could have done this first. Uh, now we just plug in S star here. So V max is going to be the velocity at S equals S star which is uh, 64.4 times 0.644 minus 50 times 0.644 squared. Plug all that in, uh, and let's write it out. 64.4, and this has units feet per second squared, uh, 0.644 feet minus 51 over second squared times 0.644 feet quantity squared. Quick check of the units. This is feet squared per second squared. This is feet squared per second squared. Those have to have the same units in order for them to be added or subtracted in this case, combined through addition or subtraction. They have to have the same units. And then we can check. Well, then when we square root feet squared per second squared, square root of that gives us feet per second. That is a unit of velocity, right? Quick check that we didn't make a mistake because the unit checks will tell us whether we made a mistake or not. Um, well, <laughs> it doesn't for sure tell us if you've made a mistake. It'll definitely catch certain mistakes that, like uh, an algebraic mistake. 4.55 uh, in terms of the general relationships. Feet per second. Great. And that's solved. Okay. In this third and final example, we um, have a rocket car. So <laughs> normal car, let's say, maybe not normal, uh, has, a, has a rocket engine on it. So it can accelerate really fast. <clears throat> so let's say it, um, we're specified here through a first phase of acceleration. Um, so it's basically the speed up, get up to speed. Maybe you're trying to like set some record with this car. But the acceleration is given by this relationship, 30 plus two times T. All right, so there's the expression, or the acceleration specified as time, <coughs> excuse me, until it reaches a speed of 400 meters per second, at which point, right, if it accelerated any faster, maybe there would be danger to, not that anything here else isn't dangerous, but maybe at that point we decide, well, let's, let's apply the brakes. And so we have a deceleration phase specified, um, so uh, water brakes here. So uh, this is that case, right? Whenever we're like uh, decelerating a process or applying a damping type of a force, it often is a, an acceleration specified by velocity. So like drag through water or drag through uh, even air is usually given by the faster you go. Well, you take your speed squared, it gives you acceler uh, a, a deceleration. I mean, that happens until it slows to a speed of 100 meters per second. So what we want to determine is, deter uh, de through this process, through these two phases, determine the total distance traveled from just two specifications of, of um, acceleration phases here. We have a linear in time acceleration followed by a quadratic in velocity deceleration uh, where the transition occurs at a velocity of 400 meters per second. And um, the final time is at 100 meters per second. Okay, so we'll break this up into the two phases because we actually need, if you think about this, we'll actually need um, some information about phase one to even start analyzing phase two, right? We know that the speed is going to be at 400 meters per second, but, um, you know, we're going to need to know um, some other information. Okay, so uh, phase one, we have specified acceleration as a function of time. I'm going to move this up so we can just focus on this. Okay, so that means dv dt is specified as 30 plus 2t. We just write it like that so it really is clear that um, we're going to be integrating. So pull the dt to that side. We'll be integrating from initial velocity to final velocity of dv and uh, integrating this side from initial time 
to have whatever time, arbitrary time, dt. Okay, well, what are our initial conditions? Well, this phase is easy, right? We'll start at an initial time zero with an initial position zero, and we start at rest zero. Okay, so that's all easy, right? That means that this would just be v as a function of time minus v naught. Well, that's zero, so this is just v of t. And this right-hand side is going to be 30t plus t squared Two, well, 2t two squared over 2 through the integration, <clears throat> and then our initial time is 0. So that's it. There's your velocity through phase 1. Pretty simple integration there, right? But we need to know at what time does our phase 1 end in order to move on to our phase 2 analysis, right? So we're not done with phase 1 yet because the important thing is what's the transition in terms of time? When does phase one end and in more more particular we need to know the distance that's been traveled All right that's the question here what determine the total distance traveled uh, we need to determine uh, the distance traveled here in phase one okay so we know that phase one occurs like so the termination we do know is that it it, it uh, goes up until 400 meters per second All right so already we're going to know what our v naught is we want to basically do the same things for phase two right we need all that information but v naught is going to be 400 for phase two okay so i'll put that in red so blue is our phase one properties <coughs> let's do it like that phase one and then red is going to be phase two initial values or whatever okay so 400 meters per second that's going to be 30 uh, and should we put some units on these? Uh, since I put units there, let's be careful. 30 meter per second squared times time, so that when you multiply it by time, we get meters per second. Uh, and I'm, what I'm really doing is specifying what the units are of our original acceleration. Well, that had better be meter per second squared um, to, to be an acceleration line that's specified there. But the two out sitting out front actually has units of meter per second, uh, uh, meter per second, uh, meter per second cubed, right? Yeah. Yeah, meter per second cubed. So again, I'm looking at my notes and I have another mistake in there. So uh, 30 meter per second squared plus, um, now we still have that like coefficient out front, which is one here. Um, I'm not gonna always be this careful with our units here, but I just want to uh, highlight this so uh, and then we're going to multiply this by a time squared so yeah this is second cubed that came from our that second term in our specified acceleration right t squared okay great um, so now let's see we can solve this then right this is a quadratic relationship um, maybe I'll just highlight a few things, right? So it can't, it, now we'll, let's forget about the units here for a second, right? T squared plus 30T minus 400 equals zero, right? This is a quadratic. I know, um, you know, we know how to solve these here. Um, you can do this with uh, some sort of quadratic solver on a calculator, or on a computer, uh, but I hope that we all know how to do it by hand through the quadratic relationship, right? So there's minus B right, a squared plus b squared, no, sorry, a, a, a t squared plus b t minus, or plus c here, so we have b squared, uh, sorry, negative b, plus or minus b squared, plus, uh, minus 4 a c, so minus 4 a here is 1, but then c is negative 400, so that turns into a positive, divided by 2 a, right, so, if you need to re remind yourself of uh, the quadratic relationship, go for it. And the reason I'm doing it for this one is that you can actually do this one completely by hand. Negative 30 plus or minus 30 squared is 900. 4 times 400 is 1600 divided by 2. We see 900 plus 1600 is 2500. The square root of 2500 is just 50 right? No calculator needed. This is going to be time negative 30 plus or minus 50 over 2. Now let's think about this, right? There's always two solutions. 
Oh, I think I have been went off the screen here for a while. Um, so there it is, right? Uh, there's there's uh, always two solutions to our quadratic. Think about the negative one, right? That would just put us further into negative time. That's not the one we're looking for, right? We started this whole process at positive time while we're at time zero and move forward in time. So the negative time, the negative isn't going to be a, a physical s solution here. So our phase one ends, right? Negative 30 plus 50, which is 20 on the top, and uh, 10 seconds when we divide by 2. Okay? So phase 1 lasts exactly 10 seconds based on that specified acceleration. All right. So now we, um, we know that uh, T0 for phase 2 is going to be at 10 seconds. Or at least that's how long phase 1 ended. We also need to know the position we got to. So last part of phase one is how far did we travel? How far did the rocket car travel in phase one? Okay, now here we um, we now know our velocity as a function of time and we can use that to then relate to position, right? By integrating our uh, definition of velocity, right? So pull the dt to the other side and actually switch the order of the uh, um, terms here. 0 to s ds equals 0 to time 10 of plug in vt. 30t plus t squared dt. We will get that s equals 30t squared over 2 plus t cubed over 3 from 0 to 10 evaluate that we get 1833 meters so 1.8 a little bit over 1.8 kilometers the rocket car travels um in phase one here okay so that gives us the last piece of information to move on to phase two so s zero is 1833 meters um for phase two again right okay i'm not going to rewrite that again just remember all the red are the initial quantities for moving into phase two. Okay, I'm gonna move on to a new page. Uh, we can pull that one back if we need to. Okay, so now let's start phase two. We have all the information we needed out of phase one. Here now we have acceleration specified in terms of velo velocity. Okay, now again, let's recap our initial values these are not initial to the entire problem that we're analyzing, just initial for phase two. And so maybe, maybe let's go back here. Let's say, uh, not, let's not confuse these two. Maybe we just say these are going to be the end of phase one. So maybe we'll put like one subscripts here. S1, T1, V1. Maybe that's better, right? We're not confusing. Initial values are going to be, yeah, let's do that. T1 equals 10 seconds. V1 equals 400 meter per second. S1 is 1833 meters. Great. And we also know the final value that we're shooting for is uh, a final velocity of 100 meter per second. Okay, great. So now, um, since acceleration is specified as velocity, right, we're going to write this as well the expression for acceleration. This is a deceleration, as v squared, in terms of, you know, the definition of acceleration, which is dv dt. Okay. <clears throat> now, we want, we're going to need to, um, the, the desired quantity here, the, what we're looking for is position. Quantity is position. We could easily go and solve this for time and figure out how long phase two lasts, but we don't really need that. So at this point, it would make more sense to just express this. So desired quantity is position. So express this uh, using position. And so this is a sign to, a, you know, keeping an eye on what we're looking to solve for here means that we should rewrite this in terms of uh, um, you know, that alternate way to write uh, a dv dt, right? Through the chain rule, right? You can write this as dv ds dt, and ds dt is just velocity, okay? 
Great, so now we have it in a way where we can rearrange this. How are we gonna rearrange it? Pull the pull all the V's to this side and all the S's to the other side, okay? So <clears throat> generally, integrate from uh, S1 position to the final S2 position. That's the only thing we have over there as we integrate in S. And here we're gonna integrate from V1 to V2, one over V, why is it one over V? Well, we divide it through by V squared and we have a v over v squared, one over v dv, okay? Now it's just an integral. This one over here on the left, pretty trivial, 0 0.003 s2 minus 1833, that's s1. And then over here, well, this is a integral of one over v, that's a natural log from, uh, and we're, we're integrating from an initial speed, well, initial speed in terms of phase two initial, so it's the final uh, velocity of phase one, that's 400 up to 100, right? So be careful with the order here, right? We're actually taking the lower value as our final one because it's a negative, right? So that should work itself out. Now, this is natural log of 100 minus natural log of 400. Property of natural logs, right, is uh, subtraction of two logs is a log of the, the quotient. So it's really just a natural log of one fourth. Okay, and then we could solve for S2, which is 1833. Well, so let's, we're jumping a little bit here, right? We're gonna take, divide by, um, <coughs> excuse me, negative 0 0.003, and then add 1833 to solve for this, right? So one fourth over negative 0 0.003. And there's some other log things you could do with that, right? So, um, but we don't need to worry about that. Just solve that and we get 2.295 meters. Great. And that's it, right? So now what's cool here is right, by setting 1833 as our initial position for S2, we don't really care you know, we could work our, oh, sorry, that's 2,000. I was like, wow, did we get so far? Not 2.2,000, 2 point, 2.3 kilometers is about how far away. All right, so that's a comma, not a period. So 2.3 kilometers about, right? So what's cool is by, by setting S1 to um, the final position that we got from phase one uh, as the initial position for phase two here, this is just the, the total distance traveled. It's not just the, the distance traveled in phase two, right? And it's weird, right? Uh, you know, remember we're decelerating. I mean, we're, we're, the rocket car is still moving forward here, it's still gaining extra distance as it's slowing down, right? Okay, so that's it for examples here of our kinematics. Uh, great.